They growled, and barked like detestable dogs, mewed, and flapped their arms, and crowed. It was all very silly, he knew, but therefore the more outraged his dignity, and his anger waxed, and waxed. He did not mind the hunger so much, but the lack of water caused him severe suffering, and fanned his wrath to fever pitch. For that matter, high-strung, and finely sensitive, the ill treatment had flung him into a fever, which was fed by the inflammation of his parched, and swollen throat, and tongue. He was glad for one thing. The rope was off his neck. That had given them an unfair advantage. But now that it was off, he would show them. They would never get another rope around his neck. Upon that he was resolved. For two days, and nights, he neither ate, nor drank, and during those two days, and nights of torment, he accumulated a fund of wrath, that boded ill for whoever, first fell foul of him. His eyes turned bloodshot, and he was metamorphosed into a raging fiend. So changed, was he that the judge himself would not have recognized him. And the express messengers breathed with relief, when they bundled him off the train at Seattle. Four men, gingerly carried the crate from the wagon into a small, high-walled backyard. A stout man, with a red sweater, that sagged generously at the neck, came out, and signed the book for the driver. That was the man, Buck divined, the next tormentor, and he hurled himself savagely against the bars.